Hey guys, it is Carl Brown from GuitarLessons365.com. Have a great one for you today. Uh, kind of a lesser known one maybe for some of you guys, but we're gonna do Randy Rhodes' Lost Solo. So I've gotten a lot of requests for this. Um, so I looked it up myself. And we got a little bit over a minute of Randy kind of just warming up in the studio back in the day. It was caught on tape. Uh, but he's got some great stuff in there. So, um, uh, so we're gonna do it, of course. All right, before I get into it, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and ring that notification bell so you'll know when I release a new video lesson. Um, and uh, please check out my Guitar Academy. It's at guitarlessons365.com. Um, it's got, um, it's the GL365 Academy. It's got all my guitar courses covering everything from technique to improvisation to ear training, guitar tone, you name it, many different styles. Got a complete beginner course there, so please go check it out. All right, so let's get started here. We're in standard tuning. I want to say uh, quickly thank you to my buddy Tracy Longo um, for letting me borrow this uh, Les Paul to do this lesson with. So it's a lot of fun to play. It's kind of half scalloped too. It's kind of scalloped just on the treble strings from like the sixth fret up. So it's kind of cool. Um, interesting to play. Anyway, anyway, so thank you, Tracy. You guys will probably see this a little bit more. So let's uh, take a look at the uh, this first phrase here. So we get into a little riff there, but at the beginning before that riff, we go. It's a bend at the second fret on the G string, and then release, release. And, um, it, and then just come trills on uh, between zero and two on the D and then zero and two on the A. All right, then we get to the, the, the riff, which sounds like this. All right, so. That's going to start with a hammer between um, from 1 to, uh, to 3 on the low E. And then down, up, down, up, down, up on the low E. It's kind of heavily palm muted. And then we have this. So it crawls up chromatically now. So, so uh, that's a couple hits on the 1, a couple hits on the 2, and up to the 3. So we have this. Yeah, still hit a couple hits on the three too. Then you could grab or jump over and grab this double stop here, the uh, second fret there on the D and the A. It's the G string. I'm sorry, it's the A note. So the D and the G string, the uh, second fret doubles up. Let's play this. Then go back to the uh, third fret there on the low E, and then do that little chromatic riff going up to it. And then you go the third fret uh, double stops on the D and the G. So we have this. And then back to the three on the low V, and then that little chromatic riff. Then back to the two, the double stops on the second fret. And then back to the, just kind of on the, the three on the low E string. And then the double stops on the three. So kind of doing those double stops. It's probably better just to hear it in context a little slower. And then it ends it with, the double stops two, three, and then the open D and G string together. So all together. All right, so then when it repeats, we have a different ending. It goes. So basically right there after the pre. Now 
Now right here, we jump into a repeated lick. All right, so that's just a repeated lick, just kind of taking up an octave each time. So what we're gonna be doing here is, so you're gonna be playing four on the low E, oh no, sorry, on the A string. Four, pull off to one, and then pull off three, one on the low E. Sorry. I'm sorry, not that yet, sorry. Pull off four, one, then pull off three, one on the A string, and then pull off three, one on the low E. Sorry, I lost my head for a second. So we have this. From there, we're gonna play just a pull off three one on both the A and the low E. It's a little four note lick. So we start with a six note lick. And then a four note lick. And then back to that previous six note lick to end it. So all together we have this. Then what you basically do is you take that up an octave. So up an octave from this uh, fourth fret here would be the sixth fret there on the G. And then do the exact same thing. We got. Then an octave up from this is the ninth fret on the high E, and so do the exact same lick there. So all three together. All right, so that's kind of how you remember something like that, just kind of see the patterns in it. Then it goes down to this. Yep, a lot of stuff going on. So we're basically gonna be pulling off, I'll do it slow. So this is kind of based around um, a G minor blues scale here. So we have pulling off six, six to three on the high E string, over to six on the B, back to that three on the high E string, and then back to the B uh, string six fret, pull off to three, hammer on four, pull back off to three. So we have this. Then what you're gonna do is go over to six on the G, back to three on the B string, and then pull off six to three on the G. Like this. All right, now from there we have this. So that's gonna be, after you did that third fret here, you're gonna pull, Hammer five to six on the G, up to three on the high E string, and pull off five three on the G. So that comes out of this. Now from here you can just pull off, you, you basically you pick this note again, pull off to the open G. So three, pull off to the open G, then go over to the D string and you pick that three and you basically do that same thing but pull off twice. Then you hammer back on. And then you're gonna end it with pulling off four to three to one on the A string. Over to three on the low E, back to one.
All right, so this next phrase uh, sounds like this. All right, so uh, then I guess this little melodic arpeggio thing. So this is something similar uh, that he he, de he did in uh, his live unaccompanied solo. So it's kind of a lick he likes. So. So basically, Walt is. You can just. Basically, trilling between the three and one on the low E string. With a mute, kind of muted. And then you hit the first fret on the A string. So the, at the first, when he starts it, he's kind of keeps this going. Kind of twice as long. Then he'll do that, and then he'll go into. Into, so it's just a couple of trills, and then back. So it starts with a little longer trill. So, so just do that a little bit. He's just kind of messing around down there with that lick. And basically what he does then, he, he kind of hammers on one to three on the A, slide up to five and then start doing the same lick there. And then at the very end, so he just does that real briefly. So the same lick he's doing there. He'll end it with this. Three, hammer on to five, pull off to three on the D. Now, if you slow the recording down, he makes his way up the fretboard. You hear this quick little... Seven, sliding into seven and playing the eight on the B, but when you get it really fast, it's really hard to kind of hear it, so it's not a big deal to just skip it and jump up to here. So, so you're gonna basically slide into 12, then play 11, hammer 13, 14, pull back off to 13, pull back off to 11. Then he plays 13 on the G, and now we start this little diminished run that he also uses a lot in his solos and stuff, and live stuff. So that's starting here at the 14th fret. You're going to pull off 14 to 11, then play 13 there on the G. And then the same thing, one fret higher. One fret higher. Another fret. And then the last one, pulling up 18 to 15 and 17 on the G. So, all right. Then it goes into this arpeggio. Now, when he first launches into this little arpeggio, the notes aren't all quite there yet. It takes him a second to kind of lock into it. Um, it's not an easy lick and it feels completely different. It's way up here. So it, just for, you can see that brief, when he first starts it, it's kind of, you, you can't really hear the notes. He's kind of a little flubbing a couple things in there. Um, like we all do every day of our lives. And he does very infrequently. <laughs> so we basically, he's going to be doing this. He's going to be pulling off from 20 to 15 on the B string. And then pulling off the first arpeggio at least. So I'm just gonna show you it without the mistake as if it just kind of played exactly like, you know, he's, you can see he's obviously trying to do it the first couple times, but he might not be exactly nailing it. But it's like 20 to 15 on the B and then 19 to 14 on the G. So got a double note in there. So we have this. So do it four times, like this. All right, and then basically what we're gonna do is take this note that your pinky plays on the B and the G string and move them back both uh, one fret. So the, this stays the same down here. So now what that's gonna be is pulling off from 19 to 15 on the B and then 18 to 14 on the uh, G string. So it's, 
So you basically do the, big, the bigger stretch one four times and the other one four times. Then repeat that. All right, now from there, we got this next little descending line. Looks like this. All right, so that's gonna start here with hammering from 15 to 16 to 18. So hammer, play 15, hammer 16, hammer 18. And then you're gonna play 15, hammer 16, over to 17 on the G. So we have this. And then back to 15 on the B. And then you're gonna pull off 15 to, uh, 17 to 15 on the G. So we have this. slide that down to 14. So kind of look at that as the very kind of first part of this lick. So we have this. All right, from there we have this. So that's going to be pulling off. Now you just slid from 15 to 14, but now you're going to pull off 15 to 14. Over to 17 on the D. Back to that 14 on the G. And then back to the 17 on the D, and down to 16. So we have this. Now from there we have this. So that's going to be 13, 12. So pick 13 and then pick 12 on the D. Then hammer back on 13, pull back off to 12. Over to 15 on the A string. Back to 12 on the D. Then go <coughs> down 15, 13, 12 on the A. So we have this. Back to 13 on the uh, A string, and back down to 12. Uh, over to 15 on the low E, back to that 12, and then you're just gonna descend. Which is gonna be 15, 13, 11, 10. Then what you're gonna do is basically go down to eight, hammer 10, and then slide in back to 10. So we have this. And then at the end of it, you're gonna do a trill from between 10 and 14 on the uh, low E. So all together. From there, we got kind of a slide that goes into this. All right, so that's kind of sliding up. And then he takes uh, another thing that Randy does a lot, and we take just kind of the same pattern and just move it across strings um, kind of symmetrically, not worry about staying within a particular key. It's so fast, it doesn't matter. Eddie does this a lot too. So we have this. So that's gonna be hammering, you pick 12, the open E string, and then pick 12, hammer 13, 15. Then the same thing on the A, hammer, I mean, play 12, hammer 13, 15. Same thing on the D. And then play 12, hammer on to 15, slide to 18, over to 15 on the high E string, 
and pull off 18 to 15 on the beat. So. So if you do that pull off and then into a bend of the 18th fret, and then a bigger bend, he starts hitting it with some pinch harmonics while he's kind of de you know, lowering the bend back down. All right, and then we got this quick little popular nursery rhyme melody. All right, so that's kind of... Not really a nursery rhyme, but whatever. So we have this... So we had this... Uh... Uh, 15th fret down the B. So I'm going a couple kind of kind of quick little triplets. So we have this. Then it goes 15, 17, 19 on the high E. So you can see this hits one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, and then and then we're back to the. Kind of a little different melody, and he does. Then the when it starts on the B here on the B string, we're gonna just play this quick group of three, then one two. So instead of going one two three one two three one two dun dun dun, it goes one two three one two, and then straight into the melody again. So one two three one two three one two one two three one two. So that melody is. 15, the second time through, 15, 19, 17, 9, then 19, 17 on the B. I'm oh, sorry, I'm oh, sorry, 19, 15 on the B. So, so far. And then the same as the first time through. And then we have this. So now when he does this part, he accidentally slides to the 21st fret. So, um, but just do the melody like the, the actual melody is. Um, you gotta go to 22. But if you wanna play it just like him, slide to 21. And then it goes between 18, 17, I'm sorry, uh, 20 and 19. And then hammer, pull back off, and resolve it there at the 20th fret on the B string. So, And then he's going to end this part with a little, uh, quick, quick little bend and release of the uh, 19th fret on the, on the G, then the D, down into chords. Now that's just a G power chord. D power chord. Back to the G. Make sure that A string is muted there. And then another thing that he does and a lot of people who play less balls do, and I can do now because I have a less ball in my hands. Um, if you don't know what I'm doing there, I basically have the neck, the volume for the neck pickup rolled all the way off. And so I'm just using the bridge pickup for this thing. So I have the bridge pickup all the way on. So when I flip off the bridge pickup, so that pickup's on zero, you don't hear anything. So it creates, you can create a cool stutter effect there. So, um, so. This. Pretty simple concept I mean, easy to do. All right, now from there we have the ending, which looks like this. All right, so that this is another one of those symmetrical licks um, almost all the way up. So we're basically doing this. You can kind of palm mute it a little bit, but we're going to play after this. After you can do the, the chords, we have this. 
So that's going to be two, three, five. So pick two on the low E, hammer three, hammer five. Same thing on the A. Same thing on the D. Now we're going to do that exact same lick, but we're going to start it at the fourth fret on the A string. So that goes over to the G. So he's playing four, five, seven on each string. Play this. Same lick again, now two frets higher. So it starts at the seventh fret of the A string. So that's what I mean, it's symmetrical. We're not worried about staying in the key, just. Now we're gonna change the shape slightly. We're gonna play up to the seventh fret on the A string. We're gonna play seven, hammer nine, 11, so it's a bigger stretch. And then do the same thing on the D and the G. All right, now the last one here, we're gonna play, go back to the one we were doing before. So this is the same shape as before. So starting at the ninth fret on the A, hammer 10 to 12. Same thing on the D, same thing on the G. Now if you hear it, when you slow it really way down, like I have to when I'm transcribing this stuff, you hear that really slow, kind of like you hear him slide, as soon as he plays that 12 on the G string, slides up to 13, pulls off to 11, and then you hear a, um, uh, the 12th fret on the B. It could just be, however he's playing it. What I think is really going on is just, he's just transitioning, shifting up. So I think it's like you start hearing them slide up to get to the 12th position for the next phrase. And that's what you're hearing, that slide. And then his index fingers that makes up, it makes contact with the 11th fret on the G and the 12th fret on the B. So it's probably what's going on. So the way to probably just focus on it is the lick, as soon as it ends on that 12th fret on the G, go for the, uh, the ending uh, little unison bends, which are this. So that unit said Ben, hold the 15th, I'm oh, sorry, the 12th fret on the high E and the 15th fret there on the B. Play those together and bend up the note on the B string until it matches the one on the high E. Then the same thing, do that same thing, but you're playing 15 on the high E and 18 on the B. And then same thing again, 17th on the high E, 20 on the B. And then just bend the 20th fret on the B string by itself up. All, right, all the way up. And then slide down just to that A power chord. All right, so it's a, it's a great warm up for him and a, a massive challenge for all the rest of us. So hope you guys have fun with it. And uh, please, I um, hope to see you at my Guitar Academy. Uh, someday soon. You get a free seven-day trial right now, so go check it out. The link is in the description. All right, I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.